shit's popping off. That should be the new slogan of the Turkish League, because every single week there seems to be something happening that is even more insane than what happened the week before. We got gifted, a, a, well, not gifted, especially if you're this referee, a particular team owner punching a referee so hard in the face that it broke his face and the owner was arrested. We had an owner pulling his team off the field because he disagreed with the referee's decisions. Then we had an all-out brawl between players as famous and important as Mishi Batshuayi, who were on Fenerbahce, after Trabzonspor fans basically stormed the field like they were storming the Bastille. This was the last stand at the Alamo, and Fenerbahce's players were trying to hold the line. Batshuayi went for a flying back heel. I haven't tried that since, like, UFC 2, when I was trying to knock my brother out even more spectacularly, and then he ended up ground and pounding me into submission like a petty little bitch. But that's not, uh, that, that's not the point. The point is... Turkey's got problems. I know you guys have been excited for me to talk about this because uh, I've been getting a lot of messages on Twitter, and I do appreciate that. It is hard for me to miss big events, but I know when something's going to be particularly exciting, and this one is particularly exciting. My apologies. I was dealing with an incredible bout of food poisoning, but I have some fantastic news. I have returned to regular bowel movements, which means I am back and fully operational and ready to roast the Turkish League. So let's go. Only took me five days... So what's the latest on all this crazy tea? Well, first, Fenerbahce and that giant melee that I already covered in a video that is definitely easy enough to find on this channel without me having to hold your hand there. What do I look like, your babysitter? Uh, but there was, a, you know, that giant melee on the field, Batshuayi's flying back heel kick, a fan trying to skewer a Fenerbahce player with a corner flag. It was electric. Uh, not fun, however, for Fenerbahce. The Turkish Federation decided to suspend... Uh, the fans from the stadium, not like just the fans that came on the field, but no fans in the stadium, and fine. Uh, Trabzonspor was the uh, club that was involved. They were the hosts of this giant dance party on the dance floor, and they fined up about 100000 U.S. dollars. Upon appeal, they reduced the ban to four games from fans in the stands and fined them less than $20,000, which I'm just going to come right off the top rope here and say... I understand Fenerbahce being really upset with that. I believe that if, you know, a couple hundred at least fans ended up on the field after, say, a Merseyside derby and started to try and punch Mo Salah repeatedly, right, that that would be a cause for year-long bans and millions and millions in fines. Now, obviously, the difference in money from the Premier League to the Turkish League is significant, but it's not as significant as you might think. There's a lot of money in the Turkish League, and so $20,000 might as well be as, like, it's, a, uh, it's like taking a penny from me, right? And I still walk by pennies on the sidewalk, so clearly that's not that important. I understand Fenerbahce's frustration, and this was essentially... The camel, uh, the camel that broke the straw's back here. I did say that, right? Don't say anything. And the camel that broke the straw's back meant that they had a Super Cup coming up, uh, you know, a little, uh, I want to say you know, two weeks later. And that Super Cup prevented an opportunity because it was another point of interest for Fenerbahce because they've been attempting to get it rescheduled. According to this guy, whose name I will not attempt to pronounce uh, in, an, in an attempt to not disrespect him, uh, in his reporting, said that the TFF announced that the Super Cup match, which Fenerbahce requested to be postponed due to their European match, will not be postponed. At which point, Fenerbahce decided to come out and essentially say, hey, we're going to threaten to basically protest this match. It's a Super Cup match. It's the Super Cup final against Galatasaray. Why it's happening in March, who the fuck knows? I have no idea. I don't make the rules here, but they're just... That Super Cups are just freaking weird, and now we're having one in the middle of March because, you know, why not clutter your own team's European matches by hosting random Super Cup finals? That sounds like an incredibly intelligent way to do things. Hi, Turkish League. Please invite me to a match. I'd actually love to go. You guys seem wonderfully insane. As long as I'm not getting stabbed with the corner flag, I would love to at least see how all of this is going down, so don't hate me too much. But Fenerbahce is clearly coming into this match with an edge. I, before this match even happened, was getting sent various things like, well, Fenerbahce is going to play the match with the new 19s. They're not going to show up to the match at all as some form of protest. Like, there was a lot of options on the table, and it was discussed beforehand that something might happen. Uh, so before the match... Karim went to Fenerbahce's Amir Khan and said, whoever starts the match should throw the ball out and let whatever happens happen. Uh, Amir Khan said, okay. 
right? The, Karim being the guy from Galatasaray, he was aware something might be going down. So essentially the idea was you, you kick the ball in play and then you kind of kick it out of play and then we're, there's going to be this protest moment. Now, based off everything I've read, I don't think Galatasaray is like the most dug in club against them here. But, you know, there's competitive rivalry, right? You've got two of the biggest teams in Turkey that are definitely at each other's throats a lot of the time. So they established this. Uh, when the match started, though, uh, it didn't seem like Galatasaray had got the memo. So Fenerbahce sent out their U19s. They didn't even bother getting their whole first team ready. They sent out their U19s. And then Galatasaray did this. And that's Mauro Icardi. And that's a goal in 51 seconds. So instead of kicking the ball out of play, Galatasaray has decided to score against the poor hapless teenagers from Fenerbahce. At which point, rather predictably, after the goal, after Mauro Icardi's goal that I'm hoping made Wanda Icardi very happy so they don't have any more troubles at home. Although I would... God, I miss, I miss that era. I miss the Mauro Icardi, Wanda Icardi drama. It was so delicious. I, you know, football's not been the same. Like the soccer drama, it's not been the same. Neymar and his sister, Wanda and Mauro. Oh, now what do we have? Kylian Mbappe getting random French islands in the Indian Ocean in order to stay at PSG. It just doesn't hit the same. But after the goal, they're all standing around. And uh, predictably... The U19s for Fenerbahce are going to start to come off the field. And as you can hear, the crowd is, shall we say, less than pleased. Yeah. I mean, I can see it's a lot of Galatasaray folks over there. It seems like we've got some Fenerbahce folks on the near side. Uh, but basically, the U19s, after the opening goal from Galatasaray, are just called off the field. Right, they, they, they just call them off the field. Now, this wasn't like the most attended match ever because if you freeze frame this, it's like, come on, you know, they, there's, <laughs> they, we have the supporter sections, but it's not like the Super Cup. It's the, the Beatles aren't in town, right? I can read what the stands say and a match is currently going on. That usually means it's not that big of a deal. But that, that being beside the point, for some reason, the Turkish Federation's decided this Super Cup needed to happen. And Fenerbahce realized and chose its opportunity to protest, right? And this is after, this is, you know, a few days, specifically five days, after Fenerbahce held a vote about whether it wanted to basically pull out of the entire Turkish league system. Uh, now, that vote, by the way, in case, you know, you probably would have been much bigger news if it had passed, but they filled the Fenerbahce Stadium with all of their, you know, the equivalent of socios, essentially, like club members, and they voted to stay in the Turkish league system. But the fact that you're holding a vote like that shows you how seriously, justified or not, Fenerbahce is taking this whole thing. Of course, the win was awarded to Galatasaray. They ended up being the winner of the Super Cup, which is something that I am sure they are going to cherish for the rest of their footballing lives. While well, Fenerbahce president Ali Koch, uh, he basically came out and said this was about injustices over the last 20 years. I will not pretend to be somebody that is incredibly well-versed in football politics in Turkey. That sounds like something that I need a name that includes one of these types of letters in to be able to properly understand, right? That's just not something I'm going to be able to approach. But the best that I understand it, Fenerbahce feels like there is a power structure in place that has consistently disadvantaged them. That being said, the power structure in place does also blame Fenerbahce for various things like a match-fixing scandal, and so nobody's hands are clean here. There is just a ton of bad blood and a ton of scar tissue, and as I was brilliantly saying earlier, they continue to find new camels with which to break the straws back. Yeah, there are more, you know, everything now seems to be the last drop of water that spills over the top of the cup, and Fenerbahce's had enough. They're exp I, I'm sure they've at least made some phone calls to some different leagues to try and get into them you now have a team that is walking off the field after sending out its u19s for a super cup final and they are sending a very clear message that they are going to cause issues uh, the guy said we have now entered a period in which we must rebel against these injustices these injustices inequalities double standards those who sow the seeds of unfair competition in plain sight and the theft of our labor. It is time for a reset for Turkish football. We are in a period when the swamp must be drained and Turkish football must 
rebuild itself. I don't disagree with that. Whether his, his claims of injustice are right or wrong, I don't disagree with the fact that Turkish football is in need of a serious rebuild. Because at the very least, Turkish football is in chaos. Whether the injustices passed against Fenerbahce are true or not, you still have an owner that broke a ref's face. You have an owner that... This is the second team to walk off the field in the middle of a competition in Turkey in like two months. Like, that is not normal. That is not okay. And not the sign of a healthy football league or of a healthy football federation that has all of its ducks in a row. And based off of the things that Fenerbahce is saying, they believe the system is unfair, that there are certain people that have friends in different positions of power. And there was a lot of jockeying for that power in which Fenerbahce, I guess, lost the game of musical chairs and is pulling the giant release cord lever thing that like all spies seem to have in their cars like the James Bond ejector seat that's what they're trying to pull now Galatasaray's deputy chairman Erdin Timor did say the main issue here is that this tension needs to end as soon as possible various incidents are happening right now all of us putting forward that there have been injustices on our sides and where these injustices are taking place is on the field uh, that actually seems like the most reasonable take anybody's had about this whole situation so far. He's acknowledging the fact that you know, not everybody's hands are clean, but that th th this is something that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. It does, because while this channel is largely irrelevant, I'm just kind of sitting in a room talking to myself and a couple of you uh, jabronis that happen to be showing up every single time, which I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. I enjoy the comment sections on these videos, but... The fact that I'm sitting here talking about the Turkish League so much and not like the Turkish League's success in Europe or look at this wonder kid or look at this amazing thing that happened in the stands every time I'm talking about the Turkish League, it's some new crazy piece of shit that happened that hadn't, I've like never, literally never seen before, right? That is a terrible sign, right? That is a sign something is broken and that they need to fix it. Now, Fenerbahce also has one more ace up its sleeve because there's one thing I didn't know until I literally sat down to start putting this video together. I need to go find it in this article written by The Independent. The other one was like a CNN article. And look, anytime you've got a CNN article about the Turkish league, you fucked up, right? Something is going horribly wrong. That is another horseman of the league apocalypse. But what I, what I needed to pull, let's see where it happens to be. Oh yeah, apparently three players and two staff members were cited by the Turkish FA for reacting to Trabz and Spore fans. I don't know how much more something can classify as self-defense than hundreds, literally hundreds of fans storming the field, overwhelming security, and getting into fistfights with players that are playing for a club. That is a flagrant violation of the safety of those players. It's a violation of the integrity of the league. We, I was talking about it earlier, should be unbelievably high fines and stadium bans and like, I, I legitimately, I mean, if it was France, they would have point deducted them down to the third division, right? Like the, uh, France has this sort of stuff, nonsense happen every once in a blue moon and they hand out like actual serious point deductions, not $17,000 fines and a four match stadium ban. Like, what are we trying to discipline the Mexican national team fans, man? Come on. That's like, we know that stuff doesn't work. It clearly and obviously doesn't work. Uh, but they, they're doing it anyways, I'm assuming, as some sort of face-saving thing. But you're punishing five people. Five people that were defending themselves, that were involved in a situation that, I mean, when you watch the footage, Mishi Bachawai is doing a roundhouse kick. Like, not on a ball. On a human skull. You're in a situation like that, and the FA is citing five members of that team for what I'm assuming is various acts of defending themselves. And when you, when you read something like that, you've got to at least give it to Fenerbahce that whatever terrible things Fenerbahce has done in the past to create enemies, the FA is clearly not a fan. And you can totally see why Fenerbahce after their entire team's safety was dramatically threatened, right? Feels very ostracized. And in, in, in the legitimate straw that broke the camel's back, is the fact that they refuse to reschedule something as stupid as a Super Cup at the beginning of April, right? When you've got you, one of your hallmark clubs is playing in Europe and every league outside of England tries to set up their clubs for success when it comes to playing in Europe because, uh, I don't know, it makes your club and your league, it, well, it makes your league and your federation and your nation look good and more attractive and gives them more of an opportunity succeed, like, to succeed. But this right here, I mean, I don't know how that doesn't get you at least on a side of understanding where Fenerbahce is coming from. I don't know where the Turkish FA 
goes from here, right? I, I have no idea where the Turkish FA goes from here. I don't even know if you can get Fenerbahce to sit down with the Turkish FA at, at this point. Like, if you're the Turkish FA, where do you even start? I don't know what types of concessions you can give to a club uh, other than just kind of promising to treat them more fairly in the future. But there's so much bad blood there. And if, you know, d if doing this channel for like two months has taught me anything, there's uh, you know, there's a lot of strong egos are going to be going into that room, right? If you're talking about people that run football clubs and people that run football leagues, there's going to be a lot of strong egos that go into that room. And it, I, it, this might get worse before it gets better. Right, because uh, how long before Fenerbahce starts to actually skip league matches? Right, I know their members voted to stay in the league. That does that mean that they have to play in it when they've got a European match a couple days late? Like I, I th this is going to get wild, probably because I don't see. This is probably why they don't pay me the big bucks. I don't see a simple way out of this. I really don't like a logical way. If you're the Turkish FA or you're Fenerbahce to get out of the corners, you've kind of backed yourselves into, right? Because, I mean, walking your team off the field after showing up with the U19s is a pretty loud statement. Holding a stadium-sized vote on leaving the league, that's grabbing the megaphone and flipping the double bird. You know, that is, that is, the message is loud and clear. The battle lines are drawn and the battle has begun. The battle for Turkey, for Fenerbahce. For Fenerbahce, I think Fenerbahce will catch on. But the battle for Turkey has begun. I've no idea who the hell is going to win. And Fenerbahce is going to end up in the Saudi League or something. <laughs> I, I don't know, dude.